Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at a new feature in the Godot engine. It's called Visual Scripting, and right up front, I need to warn you, uh, this is very, very early. This is development branch. It is not uh, ready for production by any means whatsoever, and for many of you, it's not going to be something you're going to want to see. So let me warn you right up front about those things and also tell you uh, this is optional. So this is not going to replace GD Script, not going to replace C++. It is another option in your programming repertoire, and mostly is aimed at designers, if I'm honest. I would probably not use this myself because I find scripting more efficient. Uh, but if you're a more visual oriented thinker, you are probably going to love this feature. Uh, now, as I said, this is a cutting edge feature. Basically, it is from um, the current GitHub source release. It's the dev branch. Uh, you can see here on August the 5th, there was this commit. Visual Script can now execute Visual Scripts, but there is no debugger or profiler yet. So that is key. That was the date. So any commit after August 5th, uh, you're going to want to build it from source. Uh, I have a video on how to build Godot from source on a Windows machine anyways. So if you want to check this out, you're going to have to grab uh, the newest development version from GitHub. Uh, but it's as of August the 5th that this functionality is in there. And now let's jump right in and take a look at it. Uh, this is a traditional Go project already launched, already created, and I'm assuming you have some familiarity with Godot. Now keep in mind this is not a full tutorial. Uh, this is again a work in progress, so once it's a little bit more stable, more full featured, and a little bit more documented, I will come back and do a proper tutorial on how to actually use this for programming. So today we're just going to be taking a quick peek at the visual programming interface. And to do so, go ahead and just add a script to your scene. So here you can see, and if you're not familiar with this, this is the new 2.1. Uh, 2.1 is in release candidate 2 right now, so it should be out as a full release any day now. But the interface has changed a little bit. So if you're running a slightly older version, that's why things look a little bit different. Uh, but you go ahead and add a script, just like you would normally in any manner. But you'll notice now when you actually add your script, you've got a choice between being a GD script or a visual script. So in this case, we want to go ahead and create a visual script. Now you'll notice with the visual script, the extension, well, if I'd done it for the first time, uh, is .vs. So we're just going to go ahead and actually add that. So instead of .gd, you use .vs for Visual Script. And I'll call this script demo.vs. And there you can see, go ahead and create it. And here is your programming interfaces for uh, Visual Scripts. Now, if you've done any programming using a Visual Scripting language, the most popular of which lately has uh, no doubt Blueprint in the Unreal 4 engine, you'll have an idea of what to expect here. Now you see over at the top here, we've got a number of uh, basic pieces we could work with. You know, see, it'll say right here, select or create a function to edit the graph. Now the graph is uh, the node graph of the, the events that are going to execute in your scene. We'll see that in a moment. But what we want to do is either create or overload an existing function. So we're going to come up here and click this guy. And you'll notice here all of the standard um, lifecycle callbacks from Godot are already in here. So you can see we've got process, which is our every pass through the game loop, uh, fixed process, every pass through a fixed game loop, enter tree, exit tree, handling input, etc. We'll use input as an example. So what you would do is for input handling input, um, well input, and instead of you know in implementing in GD script the function overload for input, you just do it this way. Well, now you'll see we've got an underscore input function and it's visible here on this graph. Now we can uh, middle mouse button, move this guy around. Uh, we can zoom in and out using plus and minus here. We can change our grid size using these guys right here. Or I believe we can toggle it off completely if you prefer not to have a grid. Uh, but what it is is basically a flow graph of things to happen. So you'll see here, for example, here's our function that we just created called underscore input, and it's got a single parameter called uh, event. And if we go up here, we click it. Now you'll notice a bug here. Like you'll, you'll notice as I'm selecting it, it's, um, it's growing. Uh, this is definitely one of the bugs for the editor, so expect some bugs like this. Uh, but you'll see if I look down here in the inspector, let me just get that a little bit bigger, uh, you'll see we have one argument. The first argument is of type input event, uh, and it's named input, or sorry, named event. And you'll see there's a color code next to it. So it's got um, this arrow comes out, and then over here we've got um, the parameter also has an output. So what we're going to do is come down here. You can see we've got all these different options available for different nodes. So this here is a node for our particular function. So I can come down here. We've got things like um, conditionals for flow. Like all of your basic, almost a one-to-one -one for the GDScript constructs are available here as nodes. So if you want to do, you know, iterate through a collection, uh, uh, an if statement, a sequence, or a while loop, etc., you can see them here under flow control. Under data, you can see access to like the scene node, the scene tree, yourself, um, etc. So let's collapse that down. What we want to do in this particular case is function basic type 
input event. Now, if we drill under this guy, you can see all these different checks. So we can see if the input is a particular action or is action pressed, is released, is echo, is pressed, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and say uh, is pressed and we'll drop that node on here. Now you'll see there's color coding. Outputs are on the left um, of side of things. So the things that lead out of this particular node are over here. Inputs are on the left-hand side like so. So what we wanna do is when the input function is called, we wanna check if input event is pressed. So we just basically drag that over so that we've got our flow of events now and we do our input. So we bring this guy in and connect it to there. So the input event for this particular check comes in here. So now this is going to spit out a bool. And we can go one step further now. So go flow control, condition. So we'll drop a condition node on here and you'll see. And there's color coding again here. So blue to blue. So we've got this bool come in as an input source like so. Our uh, flow control, so basically this is how the things are gonna go is this white line here. And then this goes, if this, so we basically got an if condition on input event. So was there an input event, yes or no? In the, in the case of a yes, it will drag off of this node here. Uh, so you could do, you know, call a function, raise an event. Uh, you could fire a signal. So what we can do here is create our own signal, like so. And you'll notice, all right. So we got our new signal. So let's do, so if this condition is true, we're gonna raise that signal. Uh, so that is under, uh, operate, no, nope, not operators. Um, sorry, I'm still struggling with the, yeah, there we go. So emit signal and boom. And so we're gonna string off our signal. So if this is true, we're gonna fire there and you'll see our signal, uh, emit signal, we pick our signal, it's a new signal, so there. So now you're gonna see if we get any kind of input, what we're gonna do is fire off this particular event. Now, and this is not by any means at all a useful demonstration, but it does show you how the nodes work together, how the relationships are, and how you would actually program. So you've got all of the bits, basically, of GD script in node form available here, and there's a ton of them. So we get into the bitwise operators, we can do all of our checks. Um, your basic types are built in. We already used the input event basic type here for the various different operators. So if we had a matrix three, you see all the different operators available for it, etc. And you just basically build these flow graphs or these um, flow charts of execution. And this is the end of it. Uh, so we could continue stringing along doing things. We could uh, implement a loop back and run back into things, etc. So it does get a lot more complicated than this. And as I said, I will come back along later on and do a more in-depth tutorial once this is a bit more mature. Now, as you saw, when I move this guy around, or when I hook this, yeah, so you notice that we're growing. So there are some bugs here, but for the most part, it is very workable right now. Now, as that note in GitHub did say, there is currently no profiler and there is no um, debugger available. So, you know, you're probably best sticking to GDScript for now. Now, I do want to reiterate that point again. It's very important. This is simply another option. So GDScript is an existing option, VisualScript is another. Now, I don't know if there's any performance uh, overheads, and I'm not even gonna try getting into performance measuring. First off, there's no profiler. And second off, it's a heavily in development feature. So measuring its pro um, performance is kind of pointless at this point in time. But these scripts are, you know, probably the visual style programming is made more for the artists that wanna get in here that aren't necessarily programmers that are visual thinkers. Or what you can do is you can actually mix and match here. So if you want your, you know, your artist doing their uh, game definition stuff in there, you can. And you can also call back uh, to other scripts. So we can come down here, you know, and say, um, we could call a particular script or we could call a script in a node, etc. So you can link into existing code using this uh, process. And as we saw back here, when we looked up here, you have all of these various different um, callback functions already being implemented. So if you don't really have to know the API all that well to jump in and get your hands dirty, it's all right here. So um, the only thing I haven't really shown here is the variables. There we created a new variable, we called it new variable. And then you come down here. So we got a little bit of usability stuff going on here. So let's grab it, that's gonna just, so we can come down here, uh, we can set the type for our variable from the various different types that are available. And again, these match up to the types we saw available down here. Uh, so the particular functions that are available for them are there. So if we wanted to make a vector three, for example, we do it there, and then you'll see the uh, context editor that came up for it was the appropriate one for a vector three. And hit 
enter to see, and then you go ahead and goes ahead and creates a vector three. So that's the variables here, and then the variables can be used and brought in like so. And you see, hold control to do a variable setter. I don't know if I have to do that while dragging. Yeah, so there you can see how a variable can be set in line. So once again, you string along so that it gets called, and then you could do an input to set that variable to any particular value. So green to green, like so, and then you would continue on your coding elsewhere. Now, again, you can see that we're growing here. Again, that's just a bug. Now, concern this is something that was just added to Godot. It's actually remarkably stable and full featured for what it does, but this is very much not ready for prime time. All right, so that was about all I want to really show at this point in time. Like I said, this is a very early feature. It's very heavily under development, but it is a new, I guess you could say it's opening up Godot for a new audience. So the type of people that prefer uh, the visual thinking that aren't necessarily coders, this is uh, much more accessible to them. Uh, it's sort of self-documenting, which is also quite cool. So this could open up Godot to a whole new audience of people, you know, people that are uh, not programmers per se. Again, I keep coming back to artists, but it could be straight designers. Or, you know what, some programmers do prefer working in this type of an environment. And if that's the case, well, stay tuned. Now, I hope there are some things fixed soon. So, for example, this guy keeps growing, and I don't know how to resize it. Uh, it might be a user error thing, but nothing I do can seemingly resize it. So this uh, growth bug hopefully is fixed quite soon. Uh, and there is no, no helper documentation right now for this particular information. So you are kind of uh, coming at it blind. But for the most part, if you've done any work with blueprints or a system like this, this will be immediately understandable. You will know what to do. And if not, hold st um, still and I will have a tutorial coming up soon. So this is the new visual scripting coming in Godot soon. If you want to play with it, go ahead and and build from source right now and it is available and again one last time don't panic you don't have to use this this is not replacing GD script or C++ this is just another option and it's a cool option this is definitely evolving Godot in an interesting way all right hope you enjoyed that see y'all later goodbye